year. The tests, of course, were a big topic. Um, as you know, yesterday the Commission has adopted a recommendation on the use of rapid antigen tests. This was the topic, um, of course, in the VTC on when to use them and how to use them. Here's important, the rapid antigen tests are good if you have a high prevalence of uh, infected people of the virus. Of course, the gold standard is always the PCR, but the PCRs are way more expensive and they need laboratory capacity, so it lasts longer till the result is there. And therefore, the rapid antigen tests are very interesting for example, to manage outbreaks or to regularly monitor high-risk groups, um, for example, in uh, admission to healthcare facilities, but also for the triage of symptomatic patients or residents. Important is that uh, we set performance criteria, because at the moment being, you see that a lot of rapid antigen tests are appearing on the market, and not all of them have the same quality. So it is important to have a rapid antigen tests that have a sensitivity that is above 80%. That means if you have 100% of uh, infected people, the test has at least to discover more than 80% of these, or if you would like to prefer smaller numbers. If you have five infected people, at least four should be detected by the rapid antigen test. Then uh, it has a good performance. Why I'm saying that? Uh, because there are so many different on the market, it is for us important that we validate and therefore we establish a EU framework for the validation. And this, of course, brings then mutual recognition across border. The vaccination topic was also of high importance. We have now adopted five contracts with BioNTech, CureVac, AstraZeneca, J and J Johnson & Johnson and Sanofi. And we continue um, negotiations with Moderna and we are in talk talks with Novavax. It was very good to see that all member states have signed up to buy all the same vaccines and stay in our portfolio, that is good news. This portfolio of um, now five vaccines, hopefully soon six vaccines types, is so important because it covers four different technologies um, to produce a vaccine. And it may be so that different vaccines work better in different parts of the populations than other. Of course, all vaccines in our portfolio will be properly assessed with all data by EMA, the European Medicine Agency, before we authorize them. For us, it's very important to be in close contact with other renowned um, uh, authorities. For example, when we come uh, to the authorization of uh, BioNTech or Moderna, to be in close cooperation and contact with the FDA, the US uh, equivalent to our EMA. EMA is in daily calls with the FDA to synchronize the assessment. And if all proceeds with no problems, EMA tells us that the conditional marketing authorization for BioNTech and Moderna could happen as early as the second half of December 2020. To the international part, COVAX, you know, um, the international facility to make sure that low and middle income countries have access to vaccine, to vaccines. Here, the Team Europe, that is the member states and uh, the European Commission, provided 800 million euro to COVAX. This is the largest donation in the world. Um, and uh, this is a very good message um, of the Team Europe. Last but not least, um, we have all learned from the experience in the summer that the exit from a wave, in this case the exit from the first wave, is very difficult and that the impact of lifting measures too hasty has had a, a very bad uh, impact on the epidemiological situation in summer and fall. Therefore, this time expectations have to be managed. 
we will make a proposal for a gradual and coordinated approach to lifting coordination uh, co containment measures. This will be very important to avoid the risk of yet another wave. And we are working on a vaccination campaign to support member states in the communication on the importance of vaccines. It is self-protection and it is solidarity. Finally, indeed, uh, the President of the Council already uh, said that there was a brief uh, exchange on uh, MFF Next Generation EU and the conditionality mechanism. We had found an agreement in July at 27. Um, it consists of these three components, I think, to meet the needs and expectations of the European citizens, we need the whole package. It has been agreed between the Council and the European Parliament. Now it is important that we move forward. The Commission supports the agreement found in the trilogue between Council and Parliament. And for me, it is equally important for the future of the European Union to have a budget and to uphold the rule of law. We are now working with the rotation, rotating presidency who is leading the efforts to find a solution. We all know that millions of European businesses and citizens are waiting for the answer in the midst of this unprecedented crisis. And the strength of our union has always been to overcome difficult situation by engaging with each other. So we continue to work hard to reach an agreement soon. Thank you.